Good afternoon, I'm Andrew Heaney, and today, while I'm in quarantine, I'm going to be talking about every film from the Marvel Cinematic Universe, as well as the X-Men and Fantastic Four Universe, and a few more, from the year 2015 to 2017. This is part three of four. Part, part four will be the next video I make as well as a part two of DC films. For part four, I'm going to be talking about 2018 and 2019, but today I'm going to be talking about every Marvel film released from 2015 to 2017. First up, we have Avengers Age of Ultron. Uh, it's decent. I don't hate this movie. got a lot of stuff going on. Out of the 12 plus characters that are given a lot of screen time, only five of them have any development. Scarlet Witch, Ultron, Black Widow, Hulk, and my favorite character in the movie, Hawkeye. The effects are good. They're really good, actually. Ultron is a decent enough villain. He's memorable, but he's also kind of cheesy. I don't have much to say about this film. It's a massive step down from the first Avengers film, if you want my opinion. And I can understand why Joss Whedon does not work with Marvel anymore. <laughs> I think it's okay. Next we've got Ant-Man, which I actually do not like this movie. Part of that has to do with my bias against uh, the director. They replace Edgar Wright, one of my favorite directors, with this complete hack of a director, and the film is so bland. And I really do not like Scott Lang as a character. I think he's very annoying and very stupid. I, just, I found this film to be very unenjoyable. The best part of the film for me is the part where Lewis is narrating everything, even though the character himself is a complete stereotype which is another big problem, but at least they got the physics of the Ant-Man suit mostly correct. That's another good thing in it, but the thing where, the part where Lewis is narrating a whole bunch of other characters, that was funny. Otherwise, I really do not like this movie at all. It's one of the lesser Marvel origin films, in my opinion. Next we have, oh no, oh no, Van Forstick. Oh, Christ. I hate this movie. Absolutely hate it. This, I saw this in theaters, it's one of the most boring experiences I've ever had in my life. Not just in a movie theater, just boring experiences ever. This film is insanely boring. It is so dull. It's so melodramatic. It's so pretentious to the point that it's laughable. The villain is done okay for the horrendous material we get. I like Toby Kebbell. All I'm gonna give this movie, absolutely horrendous. One of the worst films I've ever seen in my life, and one of the worst superhero films ever made. I don't want to talk about this film anymore since it's just going to frustrate me. Next, in 2016, we have Deadpool. I think it's okay. It's got a very generic story and a very generic villain. I know it's making fun of it, but making fun of a bad story and a bad villain while having that bad story and the bad villain, I don't think is a good idea. Like, acknowledging that you have a bad story and a bad villain is not the same thing as critiquing it. And that's my biggest problem with Deadpool. On the other hand, the jokes are hilarious. The charm is out of this world. Deadpool as a character is actually very likable, despite the fact that he murders a ton of people. And the action is actually really, really good. And the effects are really good. The Deadpool costume's amazing. Thank you for saving this from Wolverine Origins, by the way. The fourth wall jokes are great. Um, the editing's actually pretty good. Overall, it's a decent film, not worth mentioning otherwise. I'm glad I've seen it, and I might see it again, I don't really know. Next we have Captain America Civil War, which I think is both the smartest Marvel film and the dumbest Marvel film. It's one of the better ones, in my opinion. In the top five to ten, I'd say. It's a bit of a step down from Winter Soldier, but I do really enjoy this film. If Captain America just communicated better with Iron Man, or vice versa, this film would have been over much quicker. The villain, Zemo, played by Daniel Bruhl, is really good, actually. He's a really solid villain. And I complain a lot about the Marvel movies having bad villains, and it's mostly true up until this point. Like, I forgot to mention when I was talking about Ant-Man, in Ant-Man, the villain, whatever his name was, Yellow Jacket, I don't care, horrible villain, one of the worst villains in the Marvel history. This is one of the better villains, actually. He doesn't have, like, a memorable design, or a mem but his performance is memorable. He actually wins. He divides the Avengers. And speaking of which, dividing the Avengers is something to behold. The action in this film is amazing. The humor, thankfully, is died down a bit. 
One of my problems is that some of the characters are given a bit of a backseat, like Rhodey, he's just a punching bag. Ant-Man is, is a little bit better in this film than he is in his solo movies and later. Spider-Man in this movie is great. I love Tom Holland as Spider-Man. I'll get to his solo film eventually. Black Panther's introduction is awesome, I will say that. The writing in this film is pretty good. I don't think it's great, but it could be better. Could be worse. Otherwise, um, I do like this movie. It's really good. I enjoy visiting it every now and again. Next we've got X-Men Apocalypse. Ugh, what a disappointment. This is one of the most disappointing films I've seen that year. This was so disappointing. It looked good. And it had promise after Days of Future Past. What happened? It's not a terrible movie by any means, but it's not a good movie. Horrible villain, horrible action, horrible characters for the most part. I still like Michael Fassbender as Young Magneto. James McAvoy's good. Uh, I hate Jennifer Lawrence's mistake. Absolutely hate her. I don't hate Jennifer Lawrence, but I hate her as a mistake. The Quicksilver scenes are good. That's all I'm gonna give it. This is a really dull film, honestly. It's really melodramatic. It's honestly kind of pretentious. And the villain is laughable. Absolutely laughable. The writing's not very good. The special effects are decent. That's all I have to say about it. All right, let's move on. Doctor Strange. The coolest, but somehow most forgettable film I've seen in this list. That should be an honorary award. The coolest, but somehow still very forgettable. I saw this recently and I have no memory of it outside of the third act. The third act where Benedict Cumberbatch's character, Stephen Strange, tricks. The villain Dormammu is admittedly funny and a little bit subversive. I like that. Too bad the other villain, I don't even remember his name, played by one of my favorite actors, Mads Mikkelsen. He's totally wasted. Like, terrible character. One of the, probably the worst Marvel villain, if you want my opinion. Up there with Malekith, Ronin, and the villain in Ant-Man. Yikes. And what pisses me off the most is that this is one of my favorite actors. Like, Matt Mickelson, just watch The Hunt. He's incredible in that. That's it for 2016. Now I've got 2017. <laughs> this was probably, in my opinion, the best year for Marvel films. Arguably. Because we got Logan. Logan is amazing. This is the only Marvel film, with one other exception that I'll get to eventually, that I think is an absolute masterpiece. It does exceed its R rating a little bit, like the nudity I think is unnecessary. The F-bombs are a little too much. The film would have already been rated R without them, but the violence I think is perfectly used. The character send-offs are incredible. The film's tone is incredible. Incredibly well done. This is just an amazing film overall. I love Logan. Absolutely love it. This is easily my favorite live action Marvel film. Easily. And easily my favorite action film. It's better than all the MCU films. Just what an amazing movie. Uh, Patrick Stewart gives an incredible performance. Hugh Jackman is amazing. The screenplay, which got nominated, thank you Academy, uh, is absolutely fantastic. They're all just amazing. Just an amazing movie overall. Spoilers, I'm not that upset by the Logan clone. I mean, the Logan clone is obviously kind of cheap, but I like how it's the reflection of Logan's inner fears of what he may have became when he was in his prime. And I like the girl as well. I don't remember the actress's name. Really, really great movie. Amazing movie, in fact. I'm giving this a higher score than any other Marvel film. And now we get to what is, in my opinion, the most underrated of the bunch. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. I love this movie. This is one of my favorite MCU films. It's slightly better than the first, in my opinion. I know this is an unpopular opinion for everyone, but I love this movie. This is the only MCU film that has made me feel anything outside of the spectacle or the comedy or the action. This film made me appreciate my father and my mother this film made me appreciate who I have in life. This film made me appreciate James Gunn as a director. This film made me appreciate the themes of toxic masculinity and a lot of other things. And above all, this film made me cry three times. I'm gonna play all three of them right now. He may have been your father, boy, but he wasn't your daddy. I'm sorry I didn't do none of it right. I'm damn lucky you're my boy.
You will always be my sister. Yeah. It also gave me one of my favorite moments in any MCU film. I want to play the whole scene right here. Everyone, I need you to stay back. It's not what is that? Doesn't need to be like this, Peter. Why are you destroying our chance? Stop pretending you aren't what you are. One in billions. Trillions. Even more. What greater meaning can life possibly have to offer? I don't use my head to fly the arrow. Shouldn't have killed my mom and squished my Walkman. Yeah. Peter Quill, one of the most likable characters in the film, chooses his real family over his biological one in one of my favorite moments in any Marvel movie ever. This is such an amazing film. I love it. My biggest problems with it though, this is not nitpicking in my opinion, are the, the humor. About 20% of it is really bad. And I don't like the way the film treats Mantis. I like Mantis, but I don't like the way they treat her character at all, especially with Drax. Uh, speaking of which, Drax is a very likable charismatic here, except when he treats Mantis. Gamora and Nebula are, in my opinion, the best written female characters in the entire MCU. Uh, Yondu. I didn't care about Yondu in the first one. In this one, he's one of the best characters in the MCU. And apparently, this line... I'm Mary Poppins, y'all! ...was improvised. Overall, I love this movie. Also, the villain is a great villain, genuinely great villain. Kurt Russell, you don't agree with him, but you understand his motivations. I love that. Uh, Bradley Cooper as Rocket is incredible. Uh, one of the better characters in the movie, in my opinion. Chris Pratt as Peter Quill, aka Star Wars, is great. Uh, one of my biggest problems with the film is Baby Crude. Although he works thematically, he doesn't work narratively, but oh well. I think part of it is just he's too cute, he distracts people. His stuff does have to do with the theme, and I understand that. The themes of parenting hit very hard in this film, and I love it. But Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, up until this point, is my favorite MCU film. There's one more that tops it, but I'll get to it eventually, as I usually say. Also, one more thing about Guardians 2. I don't like to praise films with good CGI, but this film has some of the best CGI in the entire MCU. Oh well. 
Let's move on. Spider-Man Homecoming. It's decent. The best part of the film is Michael Keaton as Birdman. Uh, 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 sorry, I mean Vulture. I'm not the first time I've made that joke, by the way. He is a great villain. Very understandable motivations. In fact, almost agreeable to a point until he tries to murder Peter. Uh, Peter's likable, although what he does in the film is not nearly as impressive as Civil War. And overall, the action in this film is honestly kind of bad. And the CGI is a little unimpressive, especially when Spider-Man is entirely CGI. Uh, it's a decent film. I enjoy it. I've seen it twice. I don't really need to see it again at, at all, though. I think it's okay. Thor Ragnarok. This is the last film I'm going to talk about today. This was not the best film I saw in theaters that year, and granted, 2017 was, in my opinion, the best year for film of this decade. That said, it was easily the most fun I had in the theater. I don't even think it's the best superhero film of this year, but it was easily the most fun I had in the theater. I have a blast with this movie. It's just, it's another fun Marvel movie. Is it great? No. My biggest problem with it is that it doesn't have a lot of heart or emotion to it. And Kate Blanchett is a good villain, but she's very one note, which kind of bothers me since she's incredibly powerful and serves a good threat, and she's funny. I love the dynamic between Thor, Hulk, Loki, and Valkyrie. All great characters, in my opinion. Uh, Hulk is at his best in this movie, in my opinion. Thor is at his best in this movie. Loki is at his best in this movie. I really like this movie. It, it just needs a bit of more heart for me to call it a truly great film, but it is far and away the only good and easily the best Thor movie. I'm gonna give a bit of a PSA for now. Uh, please stay home while you're here. The coronavirus, it should not be spread any more than it already has. Th hundreds of thousands of people already have it, and tens of thousands have already died worldwide. So please, please, I beg you guys, stay home. Keep yourself and your loved ones safe, okay? Because I've been doing the same thing. Our family adopted a dog recently, by the way. Here's a nice little view of him playing with me. Can I get the toy right up? Can I get the right up? Yeah, he's cute, isn't he? We named him Coco after the color of his fur. My last dog, Bailey, that you may have seen in the Cat in the Hat video, he passed away about eight months ago, unfortunately. He was 13. Stay safe. Uh, eventually, I'll make a part two of the DC video. Uh, that's all I have to say. See you next time.